Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the DRF race of the day for Wednesday, August the 17th. It's race number nine at Saratoga. Stakes action for the New York Reds. We're going a mile on the inner turf for the New York Stallion Series. It's the Cab Calloway Division. Want to view free formulator pass performances for this race? Head to the Race of the Day page at DRF.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel and bet this card with DRF Bets. Let's take a peek at this field. Please scan the QR code for Race of the Day access on your mobile devices. This is a wide open race except for your morning line favorite, the number eight Dakota Gold. He is three to five. He was a big favorite last time out and he got beat. Yeah, he's gonna try to make amends here um, in another uh, uh, New York bred race here on the turf. He, somehow he was one to five last time, Dan. Um, you know, that to me felt like a much tougher field than this one, but they still bet him like he couldn't lose, he got beat. Um, we'll see if he can rebound here and take down what looks like a, a softer field. One of Dakota Gold's assets is his tactical speed. Let's see where our friends at Timeform US place him on the pace projector. And I do agree that the horse breaking towards the inside, the number one, Tetragrammaton, that horse should show good early speed. He was on the lead in a wire-to-wire -wire gambit last time out at Monmouth. Uh, Dakota Gold, I could certainly see him working out a second flight trip. Yeah, he's, you know, we'll see how fast they wind up going. I suspect that Irad Ortiz is going to have this horse involved early. He's going to be pretty close to the pace anyway. Um, you know, you just don't sort of feel like this is the kind of horse who's going to need, um, you know, some kind of an excuse in this race, Dan. It's just a, a race that he's probably supposed to win and he's not supposed to be compromised by pace. Now, the number one, Tetra Grammaton, is a Kentucky bred, but he's a son of War Dancer who stands in New York. And Tetra Grammaton was claimed out of this race at Monmouth Park. It's a $16,000 beaten event, obviously, for open horses. And he was able to get to a nice, easy lead on the back stretch. And he digs in and just holds off the closers as the favorite. Yeah, this is going to get pretty close at the end. I mean, I've watched this replay a few times. I, I still can't believe he won this photo, but he's going to dig in pretty gamely here. As you've already pointed out, after getting relatively loose on the lead there, not a lot of pressure up there. He digs in here. He somehow holds on and wins this photo. Now they're going to step him way up in class off the claim. First time against restricted company, but it is a step up in class. Expect the aggressive Kendrick Carmouche to put this horse on ascend from his inside post position. The number two is Cagney, who's also taking a big step up in class. Let's watch Cagney's most recent race, his eighth lifetime start, his first win against $40,000 maiden claimers. And uh, Hector Diaz just got him right up close to the pace in here, and he's able to forge by the leader in the final eighth. Uh, yeah, he got a perfect trip in this race. He just sat right up there um, outside of the, the eventual runner up there on Palm Sunday, who was an even money favorite. Um, Cagney just sat next to him all the way around the track, outfinished him at the end. No closers coming really for him to have to worry about here. You know, certainly a slight step forward for him, Dan. He's got to improve again. Kentucky Derby winning trainer Barkley Tag is having a very nice meet. And I want to use his number three, Shin Sun, in here, a very lightly raced son of A Shin Forward, a debut winner coming from way off the pace, going a mile and a 16th. And last time out at Saratoga, I thought he ran quite well considering the pace scenario. Let's watch that race. They went 25 for the opening half, 50 and 3 for the half. Shin Sun was last most of the way while saving ground. He's got to pick his way through minor traffic, but he's moving here at the end. Yeah, I mean, all those things are true. Um, the reality, though, is that he got a pretty good trip overall. The horse that wins the race, who was a pretty heavy favorite there, the gray, the gray horse, catch that party, was also well off the pace. Um, Shin Sun just followed that horse around the track. It was a great ride from Saez. He let that horse tow him into it, and he didn't come close to winning it, but he did his best to get up for third. I like his debut a little bit, too, Dan. Um, he was the only first-time starter in that field. It didn't, he made a move around the turn. It didn't really look like he was going anywhere on upper stretch. And then the final furlong, he really kicked in. I, I do like the way this horse finishes. He's going to need the right trip here if he's going to beat the favorite though. He's going to need the right trip. He's going to need the right pace set up as he cuts back to a mile. The last race against open 50 starters back in with New York breads. Born Dancer, the four, I think, has a chance to take a step forward for Michelle Nevin. Flavian Pratt retains the mount. This horse ran okay in his career debut. There was a quick pace on in there in that seven furlong race. And he kind of finished evenly, but the winner's okay. Came back to earn a 79 buyer speed figure in his subsequent start. Went third in a stake bread one other than. I like this horse stretching out. And I agree with Timeform US that he could be closer to the pace. 
Yeah, I agree with that because he is coming out of a, a race that was run at a pretty solid clip there, and everyone was closing in that field, including the winner. Um, this horse was, you know, he wasn't right up on the pace, but he was relatively close to it. I, I sort of agree with you. I felt like he he could really take a step forward, benefit from that run, and he's a great price on the morning line. The five is Marinara Sauce going out for Chad Brown. Manny Franco takes them out five to one on a Chad Brown turf force. This horse was stakes placed two starts back in a New York Stallion event going seven furlongs. Your thoughts on his last race, his first race going long? I thought he ran fine in there. I wasn't blown away, but I, I would, you know, suggest though, he, you know, he stepped back into the the one X uh, condition there against some older horses. I would argue that that field's probably comparable to this one. And um, he, he ran pretty well in there. They got him a little closer to the pace in that spot. He never looked like he was going to win. Um, I thought all in all his trip was fine. It just wasn't good enough, but he probably fits right in here. And the number six, Silent Running, goes out for H. James Bond. Javier Castellano takes them out. This horse came off of a short two-month layoff last time out and ran okay in a state-bred maiden special. He is still a maiden. Let's watch that effort on June the 30th. Silent Running was able to set the pace, and you're going a mile and an eighth off that short layoff, and he hung on okay for second. I thought it was a step in the right direction for this gelding, but he's taken a big step up in class. Yeah, he is. They're going to try, you know, some tougher horses here um, based on his first two runs. Neither uh, neither of uh, one of which is, is a terrible performance. Then I thought he ran fine in his turf debut and made an a maiden 40 back in April. Um, he ran OK here, too. But you can see that he's just no match for the winner in that race. Um, you know, I don't know. He's a big price on the line. I'm not going to knock him. It's not like he's impossible in this race, but um, I certainly don't love his chances. Number seven is Stop the Spread. Big price, 30 to one on the morning line. Trevor McCarthy aboard for Eduardo Carmori. This horse showed some speed last time out on the Rick Violet, tired behind Dakota Gold. Uh, I don't mind that sort of, those sort of tactics. I think that was the best chance he could win because right now he just seems like he's a cut below some of these other horses. His only win came on a wet dirt track and that was at Finger Lakes. Yeah, he's still a maiden on the uh, on the turf courses, and he does have some speed. He should be forward in this race. I thought they gave him his best chance to be effective last time in the Violet. They put him up on the pace. He just wasn't good enough in there, Dan. Um, he's facing you know the same favorite in this race that he faced last time, and he was no match for Dakota Gold in that spot. And Dakota Gold just has all the figures, doesn't he? The number eight, Irad Ortiz aboard for Danny Gargan. Five races, five quick races, a stakes win against Open Company in his second start at Monmouth, which earned him a trip to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, where he ran a fine fifth. Uh, I thought his seasonal debut was a good starting off point. He had to work a little harder than I thought in that race. I thought his lead changes were a little bit green. The trip was there for him last time out, Mike. He just couldn't put away practice squad, who's an okay horse. There's no practice squad in here. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know, I don't I didn't really see a, a big excuse for him um, in this race that we're going to watch right now. He's on the outside here at the stretch, but he's not super wide. The winner is the horse splitting to his inside there, the seven practice squad. So, you know, did that make a difference here? This race is going to come down to a photo that that practice squad, squad got through inside and Dakota Gold was outside. I guess. But watch the end of this race, Dan. Dakota Gold gets there. He's right there with every chance to win this race at the end. Um, and he misses, you know, he ran fine. It was a disappointing loss for a horse who was over betting there. Um, at the same time, if practice squad was back in this race, he would be an odds on morning line favorite. If the third finisher coinage was back in this race, he would be an odds on morning line favorite. This is an easier spot. Absolutely. And I think it's fair to ask the question about Dakota Gold down the road. Has he gotten significantly better for as from his two-year-old foreman? I would venture to say no. He doesn't have to, though, in order perhaps to win this race. He has the tactical speed to get a good trip. He's got it is up next. This horse was claimed three starts back by Jimmy Ryerson. He was entered in open claimers in his last two races. And this is a horse that just doesn't have a lot of speed. They're going to try to stretch him back out again. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to, you know, what the plan's going to be. I guess they'll just, you know, I suppose they could try to go forward with him. I, I just suspected they would take him back and try to make one run, um, and he better improve quite a bit. The horse that won last time out against him returned to finish third in a state bred first level allowance with a 76 buyer. Barrel of Quests completes the field. Jose Ortiz aboard for David Donk, who's having a really nice meetup at Saratoga. Let's watch Barrel of Quests' most recent card. Dylan Davis was aboard this day at the spa. I thought all in all the trip was okay. Tried to work out an inside out trip from off a solid pace, finished an even third. The runner up's a nice horse, came back to win the other day with a 79 buyer. 
Yeah, runner-up's a nice horse. Uh, the winner of this race is a nice older horse for Chad Brown. Um, so this, I think that we already talked about this um, allowance race a little bit. It's a pretty good field. Barrel of Quest got a great trip in here, and he did his very best with it. He wasn't as good as the one-two finishers, but he took a – I mean, it was a, still a pretty good performance for this horse, and I think he's a horse that you could at least make some kind of a case for in this race. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for all the latest DRF TV video offerings. Top pick time for Wednesday's feature race at Saratoga, the New York Stallion Series. Uh, I haven't been wowed by Dakota Gold's two races this year, but I still think that if he runs back to either one of them, he's supposed to win this race. Um, maybe the five is an interesting horse underneath, Mike. That's marinara sauce for Chad Brown. I don't know. I want to use Shinsan in there somewhere. I know you got the 10 in there as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, more than anything else, there were a lack of alternatives for me. I, I Your point about Dakota Gold perhaps not improving from two to three, very well taken, um, as is your point, though, that he probably doesn't have to improve to beat this field. I just think he's in the right spot here. Eight, five, ten, and one for Mike. Eight, five, three, and one for me. Curious to see what we get from Barkley Tags Shinsun in the New York Stallion Series, the Wednesday race of the day. Good luck.